hope everyone's okay. Um, here's another little video uh, about the chapel following a few things that came up in the review. Um, today I just want to talk about uh, laying out tables and how you might start to think about your kind of dining space. Uh, I know this is different for everyone and some of you are just using the single space, some of you are extending, some of you are using downstairs. So um, I'm not trying to design uh, the space for you uh, and I'm not giving you the, the absolute way of doing it, but I just want to give you a few things to think about. So what I've done here is I've uh, drawn out a, a very rough uh, plan of that internal space. Uh, showing some key things, which is the door, the window positions, drawn to scale um, and as kind of as clear as simple as possible, just so I can start to sort of dump in some tables and chairs. Um, so up here, what I've done is I've just got some uh, kind of standard tables from Vectorworks. Uh, you might have designed your own, you might be using round ones, you might be using a mix of tables. For the case of kind of this little exercise, uh, I've started to just look at sort of simple um, table layouts for six people, four people, and two people. Um, and what I've got here is uh, a one meter by two meter table, a meter square table, and a meter square table here. Uh, but what I want you to think about is, it's not just the size of the table, but you have to think about the space around it. And I know this sounds obvious, um, but it'll be, you'd be amazed how many times we kind of just see plans where they, they don't really work and you can't get access to the, to the chairs. So what I've done here is uh, I've just taken those tables and then I've drawn a kind of a, a little pink perimeter around them. You don't have to do this. This is purely for kind of diagrammatic reasons, but it is quite a handy tool for figuring out the space. So, um, that allows for the seats. Now, when you get the Vectorworks um, symbols, the, t the seats are always tucked in. And that's great. But what you don't realize is that when you're actually in a space, the seats aren't always tucked in. Uh, when people are sitting there, they're out. Sometimes they're left out. So they, they kind of clutter up the space. So uh, the second line that runs around the outside shows the seats fully pulled out. Uh, which might be to allow people in, might be when someone's sitting there. I know when I sit after a meal, I tend to push the, push the seat back and then have a chat and get on everyone's nerves because I'm in everyone's way. Um, but you, you have to kind of think about accommodating that. So actually your two metre by one metre table starts to have a potential spread of uh, three and a half by two and a half metres if everyone pushes their seats out. Uh, same is true for the uh, one metre table with four people round, suddenly that becomes a two and a half metre square. And then the um, uh, two person one metre table uh, starts to become about two and a half metres long. But the benefit of just having people, people on two sides is that uh, it retains its width, so it can be a bit more efficient. I think the other factor you need to uh, think about is people. And I know that, again, sounds obvious, but you have to think about people moving through the space uh, and how they kind of operate. So obviously you'll have, you'll have customers sitting at the table, but they won't always be sitting at the table. They'll have to move around. So you have to think about how they move to the table from it around, around the space, maybe to go to the loo or to the bar, if that's the way you're operating. And then you might have service staff as well. Um, and obviously they'll be carrying things at different times or pushing trolleys along. Um, and so th thinking about that, they, how they operate and where they kind of go when they're not working, whether it's behind the bar, to a service station, to reception area, that depends on your individual design. I think the other thing we're thinking about just in terms of sort of tables and chairs, uh, places to seat and eat yeah um is think about the type of restaurant that you've got whether it's uh high end and it's about luxury and it's about staying there for a long time 
or whether it's about uh, feeding people quickly and getting customers through the door, um, in which case you might be able to kind of pack them in a little bit. I've said this to quite a few of you, if you're spending a lot of money on a meal and you want to kind of have a luxurious experience, generally speaking, you want to feel that you're having your own, your own space. Um, whereas if you're paying £2.50 for a burger, and it's just something you picked up and it's to sit down and refuel and then move on. Maybe you're happy being a bit more squashed in. Obviously, we have to um, bear in mind social distancing. Um, so whether that's important to your project or not. Uh, I'd say for most of you, you're assuming that social distancing is a thing of the past and we're just devising a, uh, a normal restaurant space. Okay, so what I've got here is I've started to dump some tables on a plan. So for this exercise, I've just used the tables that we've got below. Uh, and I'm just starting with my one meter by one meter table with four people around them. Uh, but I've already started to make some decisions. So um, disregarding kitchen and toilets and things for the time being, uh, I think it's important that when you come in, there's some sort of uh, kind of buffer space. Now this could be quite big, um, depending on the type of restaurant you're doing, or it could be quite compact. But I think what you do need is you need a place to kind of come in, orientate yourself, get a sense of where you're going, either wait to be seated, uh, talk to the receptionist to say that you, or the maitre d' to say that you've got a reservation, um, and then be guided to your seat or even if it's a place where you're coming in and then just finding your own seat you still need a point where there might be um, a menu uh, where you can move around a little bit and see which tables are available so uh, you can kind of organize yourself before you go in especially if you're going in with kids okay so what i've done here is i've set out this zone at the front which is like a, a welcome zone, orientation area, whatever you want to call it, entrance space. Um, and then I've taken my tables with the bigger zone around it and kind of popped them in. So I know that all these tables and chairs are accessible. Now this is kind of quite packed in, but what I've um, tried to do is make sure I, I retain a couple of aisles down each side so people can walk past. Uh, but what you'll see, even if we zoom in a little bit here, uh, this is a little bit snug potentially. If this person's got his chair out, this person's got their chair out and you're trying to get around. So um, it might be that's fine. And that is, you know, wide enough, assuming that people are pushed in. But I think, again, if you're looking for a more sort of luxurious experience, you might start to space it out a bit. But the important thing is that I can access all my tables and chairs without having to kind of squeeze in. Um, also, if you're um, thinking about disabled accessibility, um, which is another conversation in more detail, uh, I think it's important that you have a space where you can come in again so you can orientate yourself. Ideally, all the tables should be accessible uh, to make sure that there's no sort of discrepancies for uh, people. Obviously, some of you are playing with levels, and I think that's the thing that we talk about on an individual basis. Um, but at least here, uh, there's three tables that are really easily accessible if you're in a wheelchair or have mobility problems. But that's quite packed in. Also, it doesn't really start to relate to anything within, within the existing building. So let's move over here. So what I've done here, is I've started to think about the assets of the building, uh, just simply on plan. Um, and here we've got the windows and maybe they start to kind of orientate some positions of the tables. So again, I've thought about some kind of welcome space as you come in. Um, I've then placed the table next to each window. So it feels like you're having, um, you know, a more kind of, um, luxurious experience that you've got a bit more space around you you are related to a window the restaurant's not so packed so you've got less covers probably means you charge a bit more for your food 
um, but everything is kind of open and accessible. And then there's still room for a table at the back. I could probably squeeze one or two in the middle here, but I've decided in this case that maybe having a central space is better. So it feels like maybe you have a dessert trolley there, a piano, a cake stand, I don't know, but you, you've got this space in the middle. So then just moving on a little bit, uh, starting to think about kind of toilets, kitchens, bars, those kind of things. Uh, and again, this doesn't apply to everyone, but I know some of you uh, are looking at uh, using this space at the front. Uh, so you come in, you have a definite entrance way like there is at the moment. Uh, and then your kind of welcome or orientation point becomes further forward. So it's deeper into the plan, which starts to affect your kind of table space, how many covers you can have, which is fine. There's no um, prerequisite for you to have a set amount of covers in this, in this project. I think what's important is, as always, you do the thing that's right for the project. So if you've got um, 20 tables or you've got two tables, that's fine if it's right for your project and you've got it working. So what we've got here is you come in, maybe this is a loo, this is a little bar or staff area or something. Then you've got um, your kind of orientation point here where you're welcomed and then taken to your table. There's space for staff to serve you. Um, but again, um, I've started to space them out a little bit. So we're down to five tables now. So unless we've got a different level, this is gonna be a pretty special experience. And actually, you know, going to a chapel in the middle of a cemetery for a meal probably will be a special experience. The other thing you need to think about is you could start to squeeze some tables in down here, but you need to be able to gain access down the side. So if there's, uh, as it is at the moment where you've got access into the loo from the side here or the staff area from the loo um, or this side bit down here, we, uh, we still need to gain access. So you need some clear space here. You could probably squeeze a couple of smaller tables in, but on this case, I'm not interested in squeezing. I wanna give things space. So then we can move on a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of trying some alternatives, mixing up the sort of mix of tables and chairs. So this is the same as before, but what I've done is I've started to think about two larger tables here, um, some smaller tables at the back, and then maybe I've got a kind of couple of um, two-person intimate sort of couple tables in the corner. Um, so again, it feels like I've got more of a mix. I can bring in kind of parties of people I can bring in families and I can bring in couples as well. Uh, and it gives me a bit more flexibility in that space. But I'm still thinking about access and serving. And I'm still thinking about how I enter and orientate myself. Um, another way of thinking about this, and I think this is a completely valid way of doing it, that it's a really kind of special experience and you just have one single table. Now, it could be that this is about um, a single table that's for one party, or it might be a shared table where people come in and uh, just sit with whoever they're with. You know, so if you look at places like Commune, for example, you'll get similar kind of situations as that. Uh, and this is about kind of giving the, the table space, giving it a, a sense of um, like, openness within the building so it becomes much more about the building rather than just the food um, it's a chance for you to kind of sit back experience that space you come in you see the table in front of you you see the architecture you see the window you see kind of whatever your interior um, kind of inserts are doing within that space it still works it still operates but um, it's uh, it's probably got a bit more impact one thing to think about here is there's going to be potentially a lot of people. So say here, which is, I think this is for, uh, I'm not counting, 16 people. You could potentially have 16 people all arriving at once. So there's going to be a point where they come through this door and are suddenly gathering here uh, and then need to find their seat. So maybe you need a larger space here for that to happen. So you get uh, kind of these points of entrance, congregation, 
separation, dining, and then then leaving again. So that's the thing you need to kind of bear in mind. Um, and I think this is the the last one. Just an example uh, to think about if you're having, uh, say, staff area lose entrance um, and say kitchen all within that space the amount of tables and chairs you're going to have in that space will be minimal uh, because actually you'll start to need a lot of space around it now you could experiment with lots of different types of tables and chairs and you know i'll show you some examples in a second that are really efficient with the way that they they kind of lay out the space but again you know um, it could be that you just kind of make it work with one table or a couple of tables and you kind of make it a special experience, which it should be. Um, so again, here, uh, I've put an open kitchen at the back with access round so you can see everything that's happening. Uh, I've put, you know, a large table in the middle that gives it space. But I've also started to think about people gathering here. There's a guy here with a suitcase, don't know what he's doing. But, um, and, and what that amount of people in that space would feel like and it starts to feel a little bit congested. So I, I do think while you're planning out, you think about the flow of people. So there's some kind of drawn examples. And like I said, they're not designed to be a fixed way of doing it. Uh, they're just examples. You've all moved on with your design stuff now. You, some of you are using different levels, some of you are extending, some of you are about having lots of people in there, some of you are about having one or two people in there. That's all fine. I think these are just some things you should bear in mind, and I think it's best to do it as a works example. Um, but if I just show you um, a couple of designers now, uh, I'm not going to run through all their projects, but they might be kind of worth uh, having a look at. So um, this is uh, Space Copenhagen. Uh, they specialize in kind of high-end luxury but in that very kind of stripped down scandy way a really appreciation for sort of um, materials and textures as well do some lovely stuff um, might not be your cup of tea but they're very good at what they do so it's worth having a look at their website i'll send the link out as well um, uh, just in terms of some of their kind of restaurants and things uh, you might gain some inspiration from it it might not be your thing, but I think one thing worth looking at is how they start to lay out spaces. So there's there's loads of restaurants on here. They've done lots of lots of things. They've engaged with um, uh, historical buildings as well, so they mix kind of the rough and smooth. But I was just going to show you one example. Uh, I was just going to show you this one actually, um, just in terms of how um, efficient this space is, because as you look around, you realise it's not that big at all. But what you'll see is, is kind of a mix of tables and chairs. Um, stylistically, they might be similar, but in terms of the way they laid out, their shape of them, their position of them, uh, does allow for more people into that space. So you've got um, kind of uh, couples tables here in the middle. You've kind of got a banquet or banquet seating, depending on how you say it, uh, running around the outside. Um, they, they seem to have used a lot of uh, like two people seating, but obviously where it bends around the corner, you can get three people in there. So they know their target audience. It's mainly for you know uh, couples. Um, they've got some bar seating as well. Uh, and then so you've got this mix of kind of uh, high level and low level, but they're always retaining a bit of space between for, for serving and movement of people. This is quite efficient. Um, as they come in, there's a lobby, there's a little congregation space. Obviously, they imagine this being kind of individuals or couples coming in. Um, so the, this space doesn't need to be so big because so if the people are booking, uh, they might just arrive in ones and twos at a time, in which case it's easy to kind of uh, operate and make, you know, there's not vast amounts of people gathering there. Whereas if you ever worked in a restaurant, when a party turns up of like 25 people, it's chaos and you need places to put them. Normally you direct them to the bar. Um, so you see here, this kind of mix of seating. And then this is a good photograph. Uh, you can see, you know, this is quite a narrow space actually. Um, but actually they've got bar seating here or high level seating. 
they've got the banquette seating down here and then they've got the kind of uh, two tables that you know uh, tables for couples down the middle here if I was going to this restaurant I'd be probably a little bit frustrated if I was put on this on these tables I'd want one of these I like a comfy seat in a window but you know there's still a little bit of space there uh, and it works really well so that's worth having a look at and the whole stuff on the website is having a look at so um uh, Neri and Hugh, uh, uh, who um, I never quite know how to say it, they're a, a Chinese um, practice, architects and interior designers. They do all sorts of stuff, actually. They're quite big. Um, again, do some really lovely stuff. A lot of it quite high end um, and uh, has a lot of kind of um, Chinese and Japanese influence as well. Um, lovely use of materials. Um, it's also worth having a look at, at the kind of hospitality stuff. But I was just going to show you this one. Their photos are quite small on their site. This is recently in Design. It's a little, um, little tiny, tiny project in um, in Paris, in within an existing building. And what they've done is they've opened it up, and then they've allowed circulation around the outside. And actually, the restaurant is contained within this kind of drum in the middle. Uh, so this space as you come in acts as their kind of reception or sort of welcome space. So you come in through either side and you've got this kind of buffer where you can orientate yourself and wait for a table. And then you'll see, so this is kind of the entrance bit where you can look into here and then this drum that's been dropped in contains their restaurant space. And actually it's a really simple, tiny, tiny little restaurant. Uh, lovely use of tiles are there as well, contrasting against the brickwork. But that shadow gap, it's lovely, isn't it? You just need someone who can get a duster down there, otherwise it'd become pretty annoying, but actually, you know, that's an idea, it's lovely. Um, and then this is basically the restaurant inside, so you can see out onto the street, there's kind of a, a little kitchen bit back here. Behind that is a, um, like, staff space. And then basically you've got three tables um, popped, popped in here with fixed seating either side and then um, uh, an island seating in the middle. But you've still got this circulation space around it. And there's some window seats in here as well, which is probably a place where you can sit and either wait for your table or wait for a coffee for a takeout. Um, one thing worth noting is you can see that, that when they've picked their furniture, they've built in a little bit of flexibility um that these are that's not one big table actually that is one big table these are in two individual tables popped together so that means if they ever wanted to reconfigure that space for uh, a special do or a party or they need a bit more room they can move some of these around um and that's a little enigmatic photograph with a, a napkin hanging off the end but lovely little scheme is worth having a look at. So I hope that was helpful. Um, like I said, I'm not here to sort of dictate how you lay out your uh, spaces or tell you the best way to do that. I think that comes through exploration and through conversations with your tutor. Um, but I hope there's a bit more understanding now when you've come to put your tables in, they, they have to work for the restaurant that's right for you. And also they have to work in terms of practicality of being actually physically get to the table. Okay, thanks ever so much and I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>